ever pondered how states decrease their debts through inflation? Today, we unravel this economic mystery. Let's start by understanding what state debt and inflation are. Picture state debt as a colossal IOU, a promise to pay back. It's the money that a government borrows to finance its activities, from building infrastructure to providing public services. Now, imagine inflation as a sneaky pickpocket, slowly but surely emptying your wallet. It's the rate at which the general level of prices for everyday goods and services is rising over time. These two concepts might seem unrelated at first, but much like a sophisticated dance duo, they perform an intricate fiscal ballet. The state debt is the principal, and inflation the subtle partner that helps to lighten the load. Understanding these two concepts is the first step towards grasping how states manage to decrease their debts through inflation. And as we delve deeper, you'll see just how this economic tango plays out. Dive into the mechanism of how inflation helps states to decrease their debts. Let's start by understanding the relationship between interest rates and inflation. In essence, when the inflation rate exceeds the interest rate on debt, the real value of that debt diminishes. How does this happen? Well, imagine that a country owes $1 million with an interest rate of 2%. However, if the inflation rate rises to 3%, the real value of that debt decreases over time. The concept is similar to purchasing power. Just as a higher inflation rate reduces the purchasing power of money, it also reduces the real value of debt. So when a country has debts with interest rates lower than the inflation rate, it's essentially reducing the burden of its debt without paying a single penny. Intriguing, isn't it? Now, let's bring in the role of financial institutions, such as the European Central Bank. These institutions can buy the debts of countries, but why would they do that? The answer lies in the economic stability of the region. If a country is struggling with its debts, it can lead to economic instability, affecting the entire region. Therefore, by buying these debts, institutions like the European Central Bank help maintain economic stability. But what happens to these debts? Well, in essence, the need to pay them back is eliminated. This doesn't mean the debt disappears into thin air. Rather, it becomes a part of the central bank's balance sheet and can be managed strategically from there. So, what we have here is a two-pronged strategy for states to reduce their debts. On one hand, they use inflation to decrease the real value of their debt. On the other, they rely on central banks to buy up their debts, thus eliminating the immediate need for payback. This mechanism allows states to manage their debts effectively without necessarily having to pay back the entire amount immediately. It's a strategic game of chess on the economic board, where the right moves can help states navigate their way out of debt. So, through strategic inflation manipulation and debt buybacks, states can effectively reduce their debt. Inflation doesn't just affect debt, it also influences the money supply, especially M3 money. But what is M3 money? It's a broad definition of money supply, encompassing physical currency and circulation, as well as deposits in banks. When inflation increases, it often leads to a surge in M3 money. This may sound counterintuitive, but let's break it down. As prices rise, more money is needed to purchase goods and services. This prompts banks to release more currency into circulation or increase deposits, thereby swelling the volume of M3 money. Such an increase in M3 money is often a sign of forced inflation, a deliberate attempt to inflate the economy. This phenomenon can be observed in the high prices of real estate, a sector particularly sensitive to inflation. So if you've ever wondered why that house down the street seems so expensive, inflation and its impact on M3 money might be the answer. Inflation, thus, has a major impact on the overall money supply, a fact often reflected in the prices of real estate. Now that we've dissected the process, let's summarize. We started our journey by defining two seemingly complex concepts, debt and inflation. We then dove deeper, exploring how states cleverly use inflation to their advantage, effectively decreasing their debts. The magic lies in the lower interest rates than the real inflation rate, a trick employed by institutions like the European Central Bank. As they buy these debts, the need for repayment evaporates. This increases the amount of M3 money in circulation, the broadest measure of money supply. Now this is where it gets interesting. This surge in M3 money forces inflation, creating a ripple effect that impacts various sectors of the economy. A prime example is the real estate market, where we've seen prices soar as a direct result of this process. 
So, states cleverly use inflation as a tool to decrease their debts, a process that influences everything, right down to the price of your next house.